World War II is going to cause FDR really to break a long-standing American tradition that no U.S. president serves more than two terms. He's going to run for an unprecedented third term in office because he thought it would, it would be detrimental to the nation to leave office during the current World War, worldwide crisis. Although the delegates at the convention were worried about this possible adverse effects of FDR running for a third term, they nominated him anyway. The Democratic platform defended the New Deal against its failure to restore a robust American economy. Democrats also touted the party's recent defense policies. The Republican no delegates nominated a newcomer to politics, Wen Wendell Wilkie, who had recently transferred over from the Democratic Party into the Republicans. He was a businessman, and he was critical of New Deal policies. The GOP platform attacked the New Deal's methods as wasteful, bureaucratic, dictatorial, and increasingly unsuccessful. The two candidates offered the voters similar positions. Each favored a national defense, aid to Great Britain, short war, and protection of the Western Hemisphere against aggression. Both promised to keep the United States out of the European conflict. FDR promised to extend New Deal social legislation even further. Dewey crusaded against FDR's failure to end the Depression and accused him of an eagerness for war. Dewey also accused Roosevelt and his supporters for stirring class antagonism for political advantage. Roosevelt wins a third term, and his party, the Democrats, carried both houses of Congress. After the election, Wilkie will promptly call for a national unity, despite his differences of opinion on domestic issues. He was especially insistent that political partisanship play no part in modifying the nation's decision to aid Great Britain and to resist to the utmost totalitarian aggression. Although most Americans are anxious to avoid any involvement in World War II, they greatly support Great Britain and the French against Nazi aggression. In, in 1941, despite a bitter debate between the isolationists and the interventionists, Congress created policies that would support Britain. For example, the British were sorely in need for additional destroyers in its fight against German U-boats and that were attacking its merchant ships in the Atlantic. In September of 1940, Roosevelt transferred 58 destroyers to, Dur to Great Britain in exchange for 99-year leases on eight naval bases and air bases on British possessions in the Western Hemisphere. President Roosevelt also defended his action as a sound policy for Western Hemisphere defense. In March of 1941, Congress, over the protests of the isolationist leaders, passed the Lend-Lease Act, authorizing the President of the United States to sell, lend, lease, transfer, or exchange arms and other supplies to any nation whose defense he considered vital to the defense of the United States. When Germany invaded the Soviet Union in June of 1941, American Lend-Lease aid was promptly extended to the Soviet Union. By 1942, 35 countries and their colonies had received Lend-Lease materials. The total in Lend-Lease aid during the course of the war amounted to more than $50 million. Lend-Lease assistance was only useful if the goods could be safely transported across the Atlantic. The U.S. Navy became more and more involved in the convoys transporting those goods. In response to Lend-Lease, Germany stepped up its submarine attacks on convoys between the United States and Great Britain. In response to U-boat attacks in September of 1941, Roosevelt is going to order all naval commanders to shoot on sight any submarine entering the Western Hemisphere waters. In October of 1941, a German submarine attacked and sank the American destroyer Reuben James on a convoy duty in Icelandic waters, with the loss of 76 of its crew. The following month, Congress will pass an act authorizing the arming of American merchant ships. World War II for the United States is just on the horizon.